Hey, so I'm going to start making tutorials on how to make maps for enemy territory. Uh, in this tutorial I'll just tell you how to start out and we'll go from there. Alrighty, um, before you start making maps you should have a clean install of enemy territory. So you should have a separate install from the one you play your games on because the uh, new install that you have won't have any of the custom maps that other people made and when you're starting to make a level uh, you don't want to use those textures from those other maps because if other people download your map and they don't have those maps that you have they're not going to see those textures correctly and they're just going to come up as a black and orange square texture which looks awful so that's why I should always use a clean install when you're making a map. Uh, just makes it less confusing as well. Um, so with your clean install, uh, in your shortcut here for enemy territory, uh, you want to add this to the end of it here. So you'd put a space and then plus set space g under slash game type space 2 and then another space plus set space sv underscore pure space 0 and then you click apply and you click OK. Uh, and then another thing you'll have to do is inside your ET main folder you'll have to make a couple folders uh, for your map to be built up from. Uh, so we have a folder called level shots, you'll need a folder called maps, you'll need a folder for mo uh, models, prefabs, scripts, sounds, or sound, textures. So you just make those in your ET main folder. And once you have that done, we can start up our program. It's called GDK Radiant. So we'll just launch that up. And when you first start, this is what you should see. Uh, in the bottom right corner here, we have our textures window up top we have our 3D window and then in the grid area here is our orthographic views which means they don't have any perspective to it uh, and right now it's in the top view you can view it in the top uh, right and front views at a switch between the views you would press control and tab so you can switch between each different view and um, yeah, for making maps, almost everything is made out of cubes, which is ridiculous. Thinking about it, um, to make a cube, just click and drag anywhere inside of your grid space here. And when you make this cube, you can see it in a 3D view as well. Uh, to view around in your 3D view, you just right click anywhere inside the window and you can pan around here just by moving your mouse around. Uh, to orbit your object, you just use the arrow keys and you can view your object around in a circle. And you can zoom in and out here as well. And that object that's moving around in the grid space is your camera, if you're wondering what that is. Um, right now our object is selected. If you want to deselect it, you can just do shift and click. And selecting the object as well is shift and click. Uh, if you have multiple objects created and you have them both selected, shift and click does not select or deselect both of them. Uh, to deselect both, you'll need to hit the escape button, which deselects everything you have selected. Right now there's no texture applied to our objects. Um, the best thing you should do is use uh, this icon on the top. It's called Calc Selection. It's a little pink icon. Just click on that and what that does is it makes it so they're non-renderable and everything you should build should start off with this texture. Uh, it saves on memory and later on when you have your uh, map completed you can tell uh, what sides players are only going to be able to see 
and then you can texture only those sides and then the other sides are just non-existent so if we wanted to only texture the top halves of our cubes here we just hold down uh, control shift and then we click on any side that we want so I'm just going to select this top side here and to choose the texture that we want to add uh, under the textures tab up top here uh, you can have you can see they're all listed here so we'd have maps from fuel dump and gold rush and battery um, so I'm just going to choose gold rush here because it has a couple ground textures we can use and to apply a texture we just click on the texture and it applies it automatically and I just hit escape to deselect it so now we have that texture applied to just that top part um, I don't think I said how to duplicate an object uh, to duplicate an object you just press the space button and that'll duplicate it for you and to line up object to line up objects you should use your grid views because it's really easy because they just snap to the grid here uh, and they can change your views with the control and tab and then you can line them up better what's neat about this is when you line up certain objects together the textures are pretty much seamless so you don't even notice that they're two separate objects that are here. Um, you can also have it, if you do notice a line, you can just reapply the texture and it'll make it so seamless and you don't even notice. Now we can adjust our objects as well. If we wanted to make a ramp, we can use uh, multiple copies of our objects here. And what we do is you select an object and you press the E button. And then basically what that does is it makes it so you can adjust your edges of an object. So over in our grid space here, you can click on one of these dots, and you can adjust. Oh. Uh, Control Z undoes a move. Uh, so you can click here, and you can bring this up, and then just hit Escape to deselect, and then press E again, and you can adjust this other one as well. So you can kind of make like a ramp. And you do this for terrain as well. If you had a fairly large map, you would just make a uh, cube here. And we just bring this down so it's underneath a ramp. Um, to resize objects, all you have to do is have your mouse hovering around each edge and just click and drag and you can make it wider from any side which is pretty neat you can do it in 3D view as well so yeah if you wanted to make your terrain not so flat because right now this is completely flat you can cut up your object as well. Uh, to cut up an object, you'd go under selection here, and you can choose clipper, and uh, you can choose toggle clipper, or you can press the X button as well, which does the same thing. And in this front view, you can just click on the top part, and then click on the bottom part, and that cuts it and what you want to do is you press shift and enter to keep both uh, pieces because it cuts it in two pieces and whatever part you cut is deleted uh, hitting enter deletes what you have cut
but we want to keep both, so you press Shift and Enter, and that keeps both parts. And you can make as many cuts as you want. And then what you can do then is you can just have that middle section selected, and you can just bring that up some, like that. And then we can just press the E key again, and then just bring them down, uh, like that. But you'd want to cut the middle in two parts, so they can have kind of like a bump there, or else it's just going to lie flat, flat back down again. So I'll add a couple more cuts here to the center.